Welcome to Absolute Comics with Benny and Sal. This is a special episode to help fill the gap of the holidays. Because, you know, we don't want to film live on the holidays. And Heather Antos was nice enough to join us for an interview talking about Marvel, Valiant, Star Wars, Gwenpool, and the thousands of things that she works on that if you follow her Twitter, you see all the time. She's an amazing individual, and today we're going to be talking with her and having a great conversation, and I don't know where to go with the rest of this intro, so Sal, take it! (laughs) (laughs) Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, Heather, thank you so much for joining us today. We're very, very lucky to have you here. Uh, You have a huge library of things you've worked on, and I'm sure uh, some some great insights into the entire industry at large. Uh, We're going to be talking a little bit about your your experience of Marvel versus Valiant, uh, if that's cool with you. What if I said no? Then we have to move on to the next one, which is uh, all the Valiant stuff. <laughs> no, yeah. Thank, there you go. No. Thank you guys so much for having me. Uh, huge fans. It was great chatting with you guys at New York Comic Con. So, yeah. yeah. Hey. Excited to extend the conversation. Yes. Right? I, for the record, I, this is way easier. I would find it very funny if we pre-showed and went over the topics and you were like, okay. And then when we're recording, you're like, nope. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do any of that. Well, see, this is this is why you guys are lucky. It's a pre-recorded show because if it was a live show, it'd be a you know. Yeah, be a disaster. <laughs> but no, we have a very skilled editor. It looks very very. <laughs> So, okay, uh, well, then let's go ahead and take it from the top then, because, I mean, you, uh, yeah. a lot of people do know you from your time at Marvel, being on the Star Wars books. The uh, it w- So I know you personally from Gwenpool and Star Wars. What mm-hmm. else did you actually yeah. get, were you able to be a part of while there? Yeah, so um, I was on everything Deadpool as well, the the Duggan and Posehn run um, through... Uh, in a way through the final issue, because I, even though I wasn't at Marvel at the time, I was drawn into the final issue. Um, <laughs> I, I love that run, by the way. It's still one of my stuff. favorite runs, the whole Duggan run in thank general. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I was on that. I did a bunch of st- uh, uh, Spider-Man stuff from Spider-Man and Silk to Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows and a couple other things in there. I did some X-Men things. Um, like X-Men 92, Worst X-Men Ever. Um, <laughs> worst X-Men book. Ever is incredible. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. That was actually my first project at Marvel. Uh, no that. kidding. Yeah. Um, it was my very first project. Um, yeah, so I've, I've dabbled uh, basically everything except Avengers in, in, in the Marvel world. Did you yeah, ever want to do bad. Avengers? Or were you like, I got too much. I'm good. <laughs> uh, I... It's, Superhero stuff, and we'll get into this probably uh, later. Superhero stuff really isn't my like where I'm most comfortable. Okay. Uh, I feel like my aesthetic uh, leans a lot more towards uh, grounded storytelling, and I feel like you can get a lot uh, into that in your comedies and your street levels. And my per- personal favorite is uh, horror. Um, so I, I get to play a lot with that at Valiant right now. <sighs> we need yeah. more horror books. I'm so tired of them. Like they come out in waves. Like we get a bunch and then they mm-hmm. all disappear. And I'm like, why, yeah. why is this happening? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cause like the, the market, uh, likes to say that horror can only exist during Halloween. Right. Um, and so you get all your announcements in like September, October around then for all your launches. And then the rest of the market just forgets that everything exists because it's, well, we can only market scary things during the scary season. Which, right. Um, they need to find more people my, like us. I, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think any time of year can be scary. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I actually agree. <laughs> Look at tax season. I mean, it's <laughs> horrifying. I, I'm horrified every April. So it's just nothing but sweating <laughs> yeah, exactly. bullets. I'm more scared in April than any other month of the year. So I, I 100% know mm-hmm. what you're talking about. But I actually agree with you. I, I wish that we had more horror books on a year-round basis. I don't like that we only see them in the whole, like the fall season, I'd say. Because you do see some stuff in no- November a lot of times. But it's everyone considers fall creepy. I don't know why. Yes. Or, well, yeah. it's, well, uh, the, it's, well, if you, if you want to get it, this is not comics related, so feel free to cut this, but if you want to get into it, uh, fall is when things change, when things die, like literally things go into hibernation, literally, uh, you know, your bugs die off, trees die, never snakes thought of shed that. their skin. It's, yeah. it is a season of death in a way. Um, people burn things, you know, so, That's so metal. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
It helps if you're from the East Coast, because if you're on the West Coast, it's kind of like, well, every day is the same. So yeah, yeah. I'm in the middle. It's just snow or hot. That's, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's all we get. Yeah, it's just it's just wet or cold or wet. We, or we don't. We get like that. Yeah. Just dry or wet. We get no actual seasons yeah. over here. I mean, we get them for like briefly, but you know what I'm saying. You get your TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't worry about yeah. talking about non-comic book stuff. This is that's that's the show. We 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 like to entertain <laughs> and let people know about us and things that we find fascinating. It's not all comic books, just heavily. Well, dying leaves are fascinating, <laughs> right? I don't know. <laughs> so you're, I mean, you're you're over in the New York area and stuff like that. How do you find the the people that come out to watch the leaves die on the whole East Coast? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm from Michigan originally, so like. I, I'm very used to fall being our state season. Um, you know, like my town in particular, we do like a huge like apple festival and, and trees are a big deal. And um, so leaves changing is something I grew up with a lot. Uh, and then New York, everyone's just grumpy all the time. But, well, they are. I, I grew up originally in Rhode Island. So we're used to the people coming over to see them from New York and New Jersey. Yeah, exactly. We got to see the beautiful trees. And we're all just like, go away. Just go away. <laughs> yeah. You're clogging yep. up my streets. This isn't New York. <laughs> so, okay. So you worked at Marvel. You did a, quite a few things over there at Marvel. What was your favorite project? Let's, let's ask that real quick. I mean, do you really have to ask? Maybe. <laughs> for, for the sake I've of got, a show I've where got, I don't have answers. I've got, like, look at this bookshelf right That's, here. There's three Gwenpool action figures. You go up to top. you got all the Funkos up top there. Um, I've got pink hair. <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, no, Gwen. Okay. Yeah, Gwen was my baby. Hands well, down. Hands. Did she have pink hair before or after you? Because I always wondered that. Because you got the pink hair, and yep. I was like, well, you have pink hair. Gwenpool has pink hair. You're always referenced as Gwenpool. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, Gwenpool had pink hair first. Okay. Um, and I decided to dye my hair pink and do the Gwenpool look in order to help promote the book. It worked. Wow. Yeah. Because yeah. I always wondered that. I was wondering yeah. if she was just kind of based on you. You know, like that. that well, that's. That's always been like the fan fan theory and like I'm about to I'm about to like confirm something online I've never confirmed before oh. but like she isn't based on me. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've always I've always kind of like let people, you know, believe it if they want to uh, cuz it's part of the mystery we don't know her origins and and you know I kind of like her whole thing is that she's from our universe and so um and then I let you know, one of the one of my favorite things I did was I let Gwen take over my Twitter account to interact with fans. <laughs> um, and so when Gwen would do that, she would literally change my name. She would change my header photo. She would change my icon photo. She would change my bio, um, and she would do a Q and A with the fans. And so that just kind of helped the the suspension of disbelief, I guess, that like I am Gwenpool or she was based off of me. But um, the only thing that I can say that was inspired by me for Gwen truly um, is her penguin backpack. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I've followed your Twitter long enough to know that you have a, a almost an unhealthy obsession with penguins. Um, no, such thing. <laughs> no such thing as unhealthy. For <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Well, that, so Gwenpool in general, what, and this is what I was going to say beforehand. We had to go live. I'm a huge fan of Gwenpool. I've made that very well known in the comic book community. But when she first came out, I thought it was the stupidest idea in the world. I, <laughs> she had that Howard the Duck backup. I'm like, this variant character, variant cover character is going to pop up in a book. What? Whose idea was this? This is horrible. <laughs> it, what, was it a plan from the get-go to take her from like meme, LOL, I'm just Deadpool and turn her into her own character from the beginning, or did that kind of grow out of the popularity that came with her? So her inception truly was just that variant cover. Uh, for those that don't know, um, Marvel was doing a month of themed variant covers, so they picked 20 books out of the line that were going to get a specific Gwen Stacy mashup themed variant. So we got Gwen Stacy as Wolverine, Gwen Stacy as, um, as Thor, Gwen Stacy as Deadpool, which appeared on Deadpool Secret Secret Wars number two in uh, July of 2015. And uh, yeah, 2015. Um, <laughs> trying to remember my stuff. Oh, you're doing better uh, than I am. I always just go, when was that? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but so she just appeared on that cover uh, drawn by Chris Bicciolo and 
you know, no one thought anything of it because there, there was a bunch of these. And it went viral right away. There was fan art. People were cosplaying right away. It was huge. And this hadn't happened with any of the other mashups. This wasn't happening with any other character. This was unheard of, unseen, completely new territory. And Marvel being a company that likes money. Um, <laughs> really? Never would have like, guessed. <laughs> I know it's weird how how companies like to make a profit. It's 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 truly weird. <laughs> um, but they saw it and they saw an opportunity for a new character, um, and so they came to Jordan and I, who were in the Deadpool office, and um, they were like, "All right, cool, make her a character." Here's the catch: she can't have anything to do with Gwen Stacy, <laughs> and she can't have anything to do with Deadpool. These are the provisions. Well, so here's the thing: in 2015. Deadpool is owned by Fox. Um, oh, he no. falls into that purview of, of, of rights. So right. if, you, if you connected Stacey, them, they would own her right off the bat. Exactly. And they would get a cut of the profits. They would, you know, whatever. Um, and uh, Gwen Stacy is owned by Sony. Um, oh, my God. What a So basically, <laughs> if you connected her to both of them, Marvel just made no money on a brand new character. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so she had to debut in a, a Marvel owned property. Like, <laughs> so, you know, everyone knows what a hit Howard the Duck that film was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, at That's least it was a good Howard the Duck run. That was the Darcy run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was a good book to, to debut in. But uh, yeah. it, um, it actually, I used to argue a lot of times because people would be like, her name is Gwen Poole. And I'm like, no, she's yeah. just a variant of Deadpool. Stop trying to make it a thing until she became a thing. Well, but yeah. Well, so that was that was one of the first jokes of how she got her name as Gwen Poole is she shows up to Ronnie to get a superhero costume and Ronnie asks, what's your name? And so she goes, Gwen Poole, because that's her right. name. And yeah. Ronnie, who knows of Deadpool, just goes, got it. Okay, and here you go. <laughs> Here's your outfit. Um. So yeah, that's where that's where that came from. But it's also why Deadpool didn't appear in the series for so long is, you know, for for character rights and all the stuff, you have to have X amount of appearances, so three issues in Howard the Duck um to 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 really ensure her as her own thing. And then okay. we did I think a full year before Deadpool appeared to really establish her as her own character. Right. Right, um, and it's why her first tie-on uh, ca cameo <laughs> appearances you see are Thor and Doctor Strange and the Ms. Marvel and She-Hulk and all that stuff. Yeah, I, actually, huh. I think it helped the character overall because, yeah, it, she, oh, it yeah. allowed her to become her own character as opposed to just being a Deadpool spinoff or Deadpool support cast or something along those 100%, lines. Hundred percent. Well, that's yeah. the thing; it, it definitely takes the legs out from anyone who's like looking to to take away from that character by being like, "Oh, she's a derivative," and it's like there's literally no connection. Yep. Outside of the, you know, phonetical <laughs> pronunciation. Right. I, I think but, when yeah. she was kind of like LOL meme with the Howard the Duck thing, that's what I was expecting. Is well, Deadpool's gonna show up and this is just gonna be some support character that doesn't matter, which is why I was like, I was reading it, but I wasn't like really attached to it. It's when she got her solo mm -hmm. book, I'm like, where is this going? She's fighting Thor. Of all people. Right. <laughs> well that man, but that that solo book just came completely out of left field, especially given the Howard the Duck appearance. You were just like the well, the creative team alone behind that was like some 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 stroke of genius i mean like y hastings yeah but like the, oh, he, he's the genius with the humor. Art. That's, i love i love his oh humor. i know no he's that that's the thing is like it's it's so hard now you i'm sure you can attest to this like to get humor out of a comic mm -hmm. but to get someone who genuinely like spider-man's funny but like you don't have comedians writing spider-man right. mm -hmm. when it comes to this like hastings is a comedian like he's mm -hmm. funny like he would set up uh, long and jokes. So Spider Man is great with the quips and the one offs is what we're kind of used right, to in the in Exactly. The no, this is like actual yeah. genuine human humor in it. Because uh yeah. Well because Webb's comics work, and of course. They, it's like, well he he does he does uh sketch comedy. So yeah. he does sketch comedy and improv comedy and it shows it shows in his work and it shows not to get ahead of ourselves, but it shows in our upcoming project, Quantum and Woody. It's such um, a genius idea, by the way, just you. pulling that, like being like, oh, I know who will do a great job. I, okay, series. I will say, I think it would have been better if you had put him on Bloodshot. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> that would have not defined expectations. Not my book. Uh. <laughs> you just got Bloodshot cracking jokes doing sketch comedy. It would have been great. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
No, for sure. Yeah. No, Chris, one of the things that I think he really truly excelled at with, with Gwen Poole is not only is it stupidly funny, it's so, so funny, but like you legitimately care. Yeah. You legitimately right. care about every single one of those characters. There's so much heart into it. Um, and the thing that like truly astounds me to this day, not enough props are given to uh, the the art duo of Guri Hero. Those two ladies are fantastic, as well as their um, translator, Aki and Agi, because I don't know how much of this is known, but uh, the art team of Gwenpool does not speak English at all. I did not know that. I, I was about uh, to bring up the art because the art's what really solidified Gwenpool as a book I read on a weekly basis. The the initial, yeah. I think, six issues, I don't think they were drawn by them, were they? When did they come onto the book? Uh, the first... The first four were by Guri Hero, and then five and six were by a different okay. team, and then Guri Hero um, was everything following except for the Doctor Doom art. Okay, right. Um, so Guri Hero of the twenty-five issues. Them. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I loved their art. Their art really solidified it for me. And we have uh, a lot of people in the office. I know you met them while at New York Comic Con. Dan, he's a huge fan of anime. He's a huge fan of that like more anime style. So that like mm-hmm. got him attached to the series because when he reads books, he kind of leads more more towards the anime manga style of artwork that you see in some comic books. Mm-hmm. So I I, I feel yeah. like that just added to the whole Gwenpool thing of like she's different. She's not being. It doesn't yeah. look the same. Doesn't act the same. She does. It doesn't feel like a superhero book. And then as the story you know evolved into her powers and everything, it just kind of took it took out a life of its own. It made it really enjoyable to read. And so, or, or, no, yeah. yeah, there is. There's something very light about their art yes. style. It doesn't feel as, as heavy as as you know some of the more like uh, classic superhero stuff. Which which right. I agree. Like it, it helps set it apart as something new and unique and different and and um, modern. Which I think her story very much is. Yeah. Uh- if I could jump in really quick, just not not to switch gears too much, because I want to stay in the wheelhouse of like what you what your purview was at Marvel and everything, um, and of course establishing yes, Gwenpool's amazing. We love Guri Hero. <laughs> I was actually going to ask about like was Guri Hero a team? Like was it like a, a group of people? But it's just it's a duo that doesn't speak any English in the translation. The, the way they can capture emotion and je- and and you know perspective because like Hastings doesn't speak <laughs> their <Japanese>. language, <laughs> so yeah. So it has you have to you have to put this story character lines dialogue through an entire filter of another person who has to convey all that same same effect and and it, it's seamless you don't you don't know that like they yeah don't, don't and it's it. and it's not like the stuff that is going on in Gwenpool uh is simple you know right like, no that's when you, especially when you get to the later stuff when it's manipulating the comic itself um like uh, truly there was some stuff that I would read and I would read and and in the script and be like chris this is great i don't know what the hell this is going to look like <laughs> right let alone i don't know how the hell Gary hero is going to be able to understand it but we'll see and then they did and they drew it and it was amazing yeah, yeah. well i think they, they they worked on the avatar the last airbender series for dark horse they did. Right? And it's and, just, uh, yeah they did power pack from our power Marvel. pack yes and so it's like you you knew their name mm-hmm. name so to speak uh already so when i heard they were jumping on gwenpool i'm like i gotta i gotta look like benny was singing like you know screaming in this into the, <laughs> into the wind about how amazing this book was. and i'm like uh-huh, uh-huh. but i heard guri heroes working on it so i gotta let's look at it and i was like yeah. oh i kind of really like this and then going down the rabbit hole i'm like oh it's actually also good right it's not just like a fun indulgent um but i wanted to also ask um about your time during doing uh doing renew your vows well yeah. before that i just want to um, say i enjoy the artwork so much i actually paid the stupid amount of money for the Curry Hero statue. <gasps> I don't have that one yet. I need to get that. That's that the is only, expensive. That's the only expensive. Gwenpool merchandise I don't have is that one. I have everything yeah, else. It's, we, uh, it was actually at the booth next to you at Valiant. I know. <laughs> I know it was. But they wanted a stupid I, amount I'm, of money for it. <laughs> I've almost ordered that a couple times for the set, and I'm like... It's on the set. No. <laughs> for the longest time, we had the Gwenpool action figure, and I had her sitting on Spider-Man's uh, shoulders, and then we swapped it out with that one finally. <laughs> So nice. <laughs> That's so great. You, I can't believe you didn't tell us we were in New York Comic Con. You didn't show that. I, I swear. <laughs> well, you know, actually, a lot of the stuff I buy at New York Comic Con immediately gets put into the FedEx box so, to get sent right. home because I travel with just a backpack when I'm traveling. So when I buy things, I mail them home. So that's easily the best con experience, by the way. Don't carry anything. <laughs> just get someone else to do it for you. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I wanted to talk about renew your vows. No, 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 no. Yeah, I wanted to know like about uh, you know from its. 
I love that Marvel comes in like, okay, so you can do this thing and it's totally your own thing, but you can't do two of the things that make it exactly what it is. Um, <laughs> I would love to know more about the renew your vows thing. Like what was, if you can talk about it, a little bit about it, like where it's like, what do they tell you? You can't do this. They can do this. Like where it came from and, and, and like, you know, and, and how it became what it was. Wow. That was vague. <laughs> I know. I know. But it will. I, don't know I was waiting for that too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like okay so so we're near Vans launches and it's uh and, and it's uh the conway stegman team mm -hmm. um, oh, i think the question comes out of dan slot was notorious for stating this will never happen we're never right. doing it's this again that, <laughs> right okay yeah good point all right let, let's let's take at it from that from that perspective of the 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 the, the, the rumor you okay the there, rumor buddy? was that <laughs> Yeah, well, the rumor was that Marvel didn't want anyone to remind you, talk about, reference the marriage at all. And then there was a whole book about it. <laughs> yeah. So, so was that just, there was an audience, let's get their money? Or was that like a... I mean, that's everything in <laughs> capitalism, right? Like, well, naturally, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and it makes sense, and I'm down for that. Like, you know, I but because I want to give them my money for that kind of thing, but, you know. Yeah, I think, I think the thing that, like, sold... Uh, the higher ups, because I wasn't really part of the inception of this book. That was all Nick Lowe, and then it got handed. Um, right. But I think, I think honestly, the biggest thing that that sold it, especially to get Dan's uh, AOK -okay on it, was the fact that it's not non continuity. It's its own little pocket universe. This right. isn't going to affect anything at all. Um, you know, if if they were going to do anything the closest thing I could see them doing is, oh, we're going to take, you know, like they did with uh, Gwen Stacy with Spider-Gwen or Miles Morales, we'll snip you out of your pocket universe and drop you in into 616. Right. Um, and that's the closest, but even then it's not our universe is, you know, Peter and MJ's daughter, yada, yada, yada. Exactly. So, and, and the fact that we got, you know, Jerry interested um, yeah. in writing it, which is a really big get for, for the Spider-Verse, um, you know, it's, 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 it's in its own little pocket corner. Gotcha. Um, the mini series that happens that led into the, and I the think Secret that's Wars the biggest thing. thing. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing is they did the mini series and the mini series itself did so well that it was, it would be idiotic to right. not capitalize on that. It's, it's kind money of on the, the same table. Thing. Yeah. Kind of the same thing with Gwenpool as the variant cover. It did so well that it would be kind of stupid as a company to not at least consider it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. <laughs> all right. So Money, yeah. that's your answer. Money. <laughs> yeah. well, listen, you know what? We, that was kind of the suspicion and that's not like, there's no, the, the, no telling tales out of school in that regard. Yeah. Uh, it's more just like, you know, because of the, the decision and, and where it's go and where it was going. And it's like for them to go, Oh, and also we're going to do this book about it. Like it just seems kind of like contradictory. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, but it yeah, was like, I mean, but if there's money to be had, well, it's just because the whole Spider-Man you know. team was so vocal about it. Was not going to be a right. thing ever and that it was? A and thing. like, you well, don't want to technically, technically <clears throat> it wasn't a thing ever because if you're going continuity yeah. wise, it was undone. It literally yeah. didn't happen. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, that's, that's your, you know, that, that's, that's your, your, out <laughs> right <laughs> you can't said, count it it's not real <laughs> well it's, it's yeah. kind of like it's kind of like and this is me being shitty and this also me segueing into star Wars. Uh, i was about to ask uh, about this so don't worry <laughs> yeah, yeah so yeah. no yeah, um but but it's kind of like when it comes to all the fans that would say well in the eu and oh, yeah. and then i would be like Right, but that technically never happened. So how do we can't yeah. care about it? Like, right, like well, we can't regard it. Like I'm not gonna reference. Like, she's right I was now. like, like, well, <laughs> technically, that literally never happened. So I'm not gonna be upset over something that literally never right. happened. Yeah, that was my argument well, all the time. You can't Actually, with the EU and Star Wars. Speaking of Star Wars, uh, but I never really got into the EU. My brother was a huge mm -hmm. fan of the EU. When they wiped it, I was happy. I was like, I could get yeah. into <laughs> Star Wars is no longer impenetrable. I could get into more yeah. than the movies. Well, right. <laughs> like, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of the same thing. Like when it's like, Oh my God, there's like, you know, a thousand and two hundred issues of this comic. How can I ever get caught up? And then, yeah. you know, it's, it, it, it was wiping the E kind of, it was that same, you yeah. know, clean slate of like, Oh, a new number one 
I can, it's just the movies. I've seen the movies. Okay, I can embrace this. Right. So my question about your experience of Star Wars, I've worked with Disney yeah. so much that I don't do it anymore because of uh, how much fun it is. Because <laughs> uh, the mouse is so willing to let me do whatever I want when I worked with him. Uh, <laughs> how? What was your experience with Disney coming in with Star Wars? Like, for from my experience, Disney has their hands in everything. There's no freedom at all. So I, I, I was curious what your experience is and what you could talk about with that. So having been a Disney insider, <laughs> um, no, uh, I, I would say a little bit. I, I, I can totally see um, how from your perspective and, and your, your, your part in the Disney, you know, machine of things, right. they're going to be a little bit more hands on. Um, but when it comes, you know, there was a lot of fear when Disney bought Pixar are, is, is all of this stuff going to change? There's a lot of fear when Disney bought Marvel is everything going to change a lot of fear when Disney bought Lucasfilm is, are there going to be a lot of things that change? And at the end of the day, um, Disney only buys companies that will make them money. Again, we're going to go back to the right. capitalist you know, of corporate, it's all about money. And so long as that company is continuing to make money, Disney's going to stay out. Um, and so, so long as, you know, the Toy Story movies kept making, kept making what, what they wanted to make, Disney's not going to interfere. Um, right. So long as Marvel keeps, you know, selling the comics that they need to sell and the movies keep hitting the numbers that they need to, you know, they're, they're not going to touch it. Um, same thing with Star Wars. So long as Star Wars keeps making the profits and making the numbers and, and growing in the way that Disney wants them to, Disney's going to stay out of it. So when it came to, um, when it came to start with the Star Wars comics, we only dealt with Lucasfilm. The only time Disney would have ever interfered was if like hypothetically, you know, um, you know, we did Star Wars number one and it sold over a million copies and Lucasfilm was like, cool, that's all we needed. Uh, <laughs> Disney would be like, <laughs> yeah. but, but like, obviously that didn't happen. It went on for 75 right, years. Right. Exactly. Um, but, but that's, so when it, when it came to, to the mouse, I never dealt with them. The mouse never showed okay. up. I just, it was just a, 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 it was honestly a very collaborative experience with Lucasfilm. Um, you know, it was, it, they were very hands on, but it was, it was very much, you know, a, a group effort. Okay. Cool. I mean, for the record, my experience with Disney was uh, before I, the company I work through right now for my YouTube channel, we worked through Disney. So they would, they were mm -hmm. very hands on as to what they liked and disliked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, that's actually really interesting because the rumor is, you know, of course, rumors are where everything goes. Uh, is that Disney is all in there and they're get their hands on everything and they're adapting all the Marvel stuff and, well, yeah, I think that's it's 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 part of a, a fan mentality of you're very very active and you and you you know it's always easy to blame the corporate. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Right, you know it's it's always easy to blame the suit. It's um, the outsider, the new. You know they can't possibly have good intentions. And <laughs> you know from my experience, when it comes to creative endeavors, so long as you know the creators are creating product that sells. Um, you know, Disney, Disney stays out of it. Yeah. So I'm going to assume then speaking of creative endeavors that you had a hand in the creation of Dr. Afra and having her go on as her own character, which I stand by as one of the greatest creations that came out of the, the Disney, not Disney, the Marvel star Wars line that they're doing now. Is she, yeah, thank she, you. I, I loved her book. I love her character. I love everything they're doing with her. The only reason I even stopped reading it is I just got too many books on my list. And it was like, oh, I guess I'll just have to put this in catch up later. And whenever I do that, it always gets forgotten until like five trades in. And then I just never get back to it. <laughs> um, well, since Benny just admitted he stopped reading Dr. It, Afro. It was at like issue 35. Um, <laughs> like issue 35 I, or so. I've never been more insulted. Uh, <laughs> well, it's so great to have you so much. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, My channel name is Comic Club. You guys come by anytime. <laughs> 
I got all the way past the droids turning on her. So I did get good ways into it. I didn't, it's not like I immediately dropped it off. But it was so interesting mm-hmm. to see this character. Like the Vader book was incredible. The whole concept oh, yeah. of it. And then at the end of it was like, oh no, he's going to kill Dr. Afra. We all knew it was coming. No. That's totally what yeah, was going. Yeah, like, there's like, no I way was, this could like, end like this. You know? It made me very sad. I was like, oh, it's too bad she has to die, but I totally get <laughs> no. it. And then she does it, and I'm like, all right, right on. I guess I liked her enough for her not to die. My favorite thing about that, Darth Vader 25. Uh, yeah. So for those who haven't read it, Darth Vader 25, spoilers. Um, for a final <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. But still, um... Uh, Afra, you know, she knows that Vader's gonna kill her, and so she basically cons him. Um, but to the reader, at first, it looks like Vader killed her. He shoots her out of an airlock, and then the book ends. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then we have an after credit sequence that shows that Afra is floating out in space, and then she's picked up by Blacker Sand BT and Triple Zero and her own ship. And so, so as far as Vader's concerned, she's dead, right. um, but she can continue on existing. My favorite thing about doing that ending is there were people that didn't actually buy the physical copies. They read digitally. <laughs> and so they read and then they get to the credits page and then they, they just closed stop it. Stop reading. <laughs> right. And so I got texts from like even other writers, even other <laughs> people. Uh, I'm notorious like, for I that. Think Daniel, reading digitally. I think Daniel Kibblesmith texted and was like, oh, it's such a great end. I'm so I can't believe you guys killed Dr. Afra. <laughs> and just like, no, we didn't though. <laughs> right. yeah. I do like that her no, book has now gone on longer than any of the Vader series since they keep restarting it. It's constantly got like yeah. a new story or a new mini. So her book, I, I, is it finally over? Because it was around 35 or so is what I stopped reading. Yeah, something. So it's ending in December, the same time as uh, Star Wars 75 okay. is hitting. Um, and I think, I don't, I'm not there. Right. So you don't I have all don't the information on her. Speak anything that I say, but I, I would assume since star Wars is relaunching and uh, between um, empire and, and return, I assume Afro would, would relaunch then too. Yeah. Um, it makes sense, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. Right. That, that was so more of a general comic movie. reader question. Like, is this still going? I know you're yeah. not editing it anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was still going as far as, well, like, uh, I know, I know it's going at least until December. Okay. So. Yeah. So what, uh, what other experiences do you have with Star Wars that you, en- you enjoyed? You, you got the, you, do you, you had your hands in everything that came out, right? So the Vader yeah. books, the Star Wars yeah. books, the, the spinoffs for each one of the characters, the Solo, the Princess Leia book, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to say like probably my favorite thing was, um, this is a little known fact, but, uh, I created BB-8's language. Oh, um, I didn't know he had a language. He does have a language. <laughs> um, so fun fact for those who don't know, when they write Chewbacca, when they write BB-8, when they write um, Chopper, uh, when they write any of the nonverbal characters um, that the other characters communicate with, uh, in the scripts, they actually write what they're saying in English. They don't, they don't like for Chewbacca, they don't write, like, they don't do that. <laughs> Um, they write, you know, Han, you're being an ass. Uh, and, and then it's up to the, you know, the people who do dubbing and and all of that to, to come up with the language. And so when we were doing the force awakens adaptation and the Poe Dameron book, um, Charles soul and Jody Hauser, when they wrote BB eight, they just wrote, um, the English, the English version of what they said. And so when, we were sending the lettering drafts to the letterer. Uh, we had to come up with sound effects for for BB-8. And I asked Lucasfilm, like, do you guys typically have a guide on, like, what you do? And they're like, oh, no. And so me being the crazy person that I am, <laughs> um, watched Force Awakens, read the Force Awakens scripts to compare, like, what BB-8 was saying and the sounds that he was making. And I literally... I created a sound effects language for him based out of that, that I then continued to build with the Poe Dameron book and it's become Lucasfilm official. They had me type up the document. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Congratulations. Send, you're go, You're just, yeah, it's what they, it's what they send to all their other creators. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it's weird. You're like, I did this for fun and now it's like in Canon. It's a thing now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Well, that's awesome. So, what was your, uh, outside of that, what was your favorite part about doing? Like, wh- which of those books would you say is your favorite book to have worked on? Oh my gosh. Uh, Vader Down was just so cool. Um, yeah. Vader Down was really, really cool to, to kind of build, you know, it was the whole first year of Star Wars and Darth Vader, and we're, we're building to this moment in a true Marvel comic style event. Um, and, you know, outside of A New Hope, this was the first con- confrontation of Vader pursuing the Rebels. And right. it was a really big moment. And, you know, there's an amazing panel where, uh, you know, Mike Diodato drew Vader in all his glory. And he says, all I see are dead men. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> before he's about to attack the rebels and it's just chills. It's, it's, it's so, so, so good. We um, all still quote that. You know, getting... <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. Um, and then of course, another, another moment was, um, it was star Wars six and Darth Vader six that came out the same day. And in that, you know, Vader had been pursuing the X-wing pilot that shot down the death star. Um, he had Boba Fett go out and try and figure out who this guy is. Yep. Um, and this was the issue that we saw um, Vader discover that Luke is his son and that the yeah. Emperor lied to him. Um, and so that was a really, <laughs> like getting to be a part of these moments that really change, you know, how you view the films. Because after watching, after reading the Star Wars series and then going back and watching Empire, like Empire is completely different now. Yeah. There's, you, you, you've seen all of these important key moments happen um, and I think that's so cool that, you know, 40 years later, we can still impact the story in these monumental ways. Yeah. I, I've been taking up all the Star Wars time, Sal. Do you have anything you want to ask? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have a question. And we, we should have talked about this before the, the show started. But um, there's a rumor that you wanted to do a Marvel Star Wars crossover. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I would love to know what what it was and uh, what the con- and how quickly they said no. <laughs> so let me pull up. Actually, I have I have the pitch that I. Okay. Wrote oh wow! All it. right. I think you just uh, gave us the clickbait title for the interview. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my rejected pitch for the Marvel Star Wars crossover <laughs> event that will never happen. <clears throat> It's the early days of the Death Star. The Empire sees a strange chrome figure arrive on what appears to be a long board. He brings a warning, but it is too late. Appearing out of the abyss is Galactus, but what was to be his midday snack, he soon learns to be, in fact, no moon at all. Okay, yeah. Why isn't that a thing? (laughs) (laughs) Now, was, did you have like... because we've read a couple of other pitches out there where they're like, okay, and this will go to here and here, and this is like the spinoff book, and this is like this, the tie-in issue. And the, did did that spin out into a whole thing, or was that just no. like your line, like, give oh. me the book. This is gonna, this will be enough, <laughs> and then they'll then they'll give me the book, and obviously we'll. we'll... Yeah, no, it was never gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now was uh, that now who 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 gets to choose that? Was like, is oh. Lucasfilm like, oh no, or is that like yeah, Marvel well, being like, we'll never do that? Oh no no no, Marvel Marvel's gonna do anything that's gonna. Be <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know why I always assume Gwen that's not going to be a the thing. character. They turned Gwen <laughs> into a character. Marvel's right. Gonna Very make cover happen. character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it, it was, it's just a uh, different creative philosophy. So, you know, the Marvel creative philosophy uh, when it comes to Canon and continuity is, well, everything is Canon until it isn't. Exactly. Um, and so uh, with how Lucasfilm continuity works is, Everything is canon. Right. Period. Stop. Um, right. And so the second that you do something like this, um, it just, it, you know, blows the cosmos in a way that Luke's home just, you know, th- that's just not how they operate. It's not how they work. Um, it's not going to happen. Right. Um, I never thought about so, that. But yeah, no. But they, yeah, they never do like what, what ifs and stuff. At Lucas home. No, they yeah. don't. That's, well, they that's did, not a thing. There's well, an older they book. It. Yeah. They did it. Before this pre mar yes, exactly. Right. right, right, right. But in this new canon, like since the Disney takeover um, and the launch, you know, of Force Awakens and everything, everything previous has been wiped. Everything Don't clutter since, it. Since right, everything since is 
is canon. Uh, the yeah. new Fallen Order game that came out is canon. Exactly. Um, Great game. You know, all of these comics are canon. The cartoons are canon. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's it's why with the the variant covers, you know, um, like they're they're technically canon. Um, so right. you're so not we're gonna not going to see, see <laughs> like you're not going to see Darth Vader and Kylo Ren and Darth Maul and the Emperor all chilling at a bar having a drink together. That literally would have never. That happened. would be the greatest right. cover um, ever. <laughs> um, alas. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I mean, this, this, this pitch, this Galactus pitch all came out of the idea, like everyone, you know, oh, it's going to be the rebels and so-and-so are going to meet up and that's going to be the story. Or it's going to be, you know, the Millennium Falcon, Han and Chewie are going to meet the Guardians of the Galaxy and that will be the crossover. You know, those right. are the obvious. And like, I, I don't know, like for me, there's something so fascinating about Galactus versus the Empire that yeah. like, who do you root for in that situation? <laughs> right. No, I I want to see that. Like, right? Because... Who do you, who do you root for? Yeah. No one. You just want them both to destroy each other. Right. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that. Yeah. No, well, especially. It, yeah. Well, he can. The, and if the Empire, if the if the Death Star can destroy a whole planet, maybe it could destroy Galactus. We don't know. Yeah. Um, it's like they. Well, the, it writes itself. Is well. Yeah. <laughs> Then you give it to uh -oh. Christopher Hastings, and it's just a fun romp of the two of them fighting. Yeah, then it becomes <laughs> Tag and Bing. <laughs> well, then, oh my God, yes, yes. <laughs> Tag and Bing no, no. needs to get come back. By the way, I want I want Chris Hastings to write like just two instead of Tag and Bing, like the Tag and Bing of of the Empire, like the yeah. two like Death Star, <laughs> you know, troopers. Right. That's what I want. I want a stormtrooper buddy comedy. Yeah, that needs to exist. Like now. troops, yeah, like troops. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, obviously, you had a, a pretty a, amazing career over at Marvel. Prolific. Prolific. There you go. Yeah. I can never pronounce <laughs> things properly. It's really interesting when I try to pronounce some writers and artists' names that aren't like easy. Oh. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, uh, you eventually, uh, you obviously, you're now at Valiant. How how was that transition? What did what made what made you convinced to come and work with Valiant? Work on these great books, all the stuff that's coming out. Uh, be basically do okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I do, but but it was fun watching you. I, I, I'm just going down a rabbit hole of not being. A, it's not like talking's how my job works or anything like that. I don't know. I don't know why right? I'm having no, so many issues right now. <laughs> uh, it's okay. You're just in such great company with Sal. Yeah. You know, really, so, really. Thank you. Yeah, I screwed up earlier. I'm just so trying to think of the proper offended. way to word it, so it's not like I'm not offending, but I'm not like not offending. Right. <laughs> You're like, why, no. valiant? why valiant? No, <laughs> of all things. So you know, we kind of talked about this a little um, before uh, before we started recording, but um, you know, uh, my my bread and butter in storytelling has never been superhero. Um, I was very, very lucky when I got hired by Marvel that I was brought into the really the only two franchises I gave a shit about at Marvel, and that was right. Deadpool, which was up until I got interviewed, literally the only Marvel comic I read was Deadpool. Um, and then I was interviewing, and I was like, well, I guess I should read some other stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I mean, at least you read Deadpool. But, you got some good taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, and then I've been a huge Star Wars fan my entire life. Um, and so I was very lucky to be brought onto both of those franchises, but, um, yeah, I just, you know, superhero stuff has never really been my true passion. Um, you know, when I got into comics, it was, a, it was the vertigo stuff that got me in, you know, it was Transmetropolitan, Why the Last Man, Sandman, Hellblazer, like that sort of stuff is, is what got me reading. I'm a huge image fan, you know, all of that stuff. And, um, you know, part of the appeal of Valiant is, is they are such grounded superheroes. Um, you know, they're, they're, they are still big and bold, but in a much more, I think, um, true to reality kind of way, you know, everything is, everything is based in sort of a, a realm of science fiction um, where, you know, it's, it's, it's that like suspended future. It could be possible. Like bloodshot with the nanites. Like, is it real? No. Um, could we possibly get there one day in, in, in science? Maybe. Um, 
that's terrifying, <laughs> but maybe. Um, so, uh, and and the, the, the thing with Valiant 2 is they're, they're, they're so young in their universe. There's, they're, you know, this, this new iteration of the universe especially has only been around for seven years. Right. So they're very, very fresh. There's so much left to explore. And even even the oldest stuff, if you want to count everything that has ever been published, it's really only 30 years. Um, so there's so much new stuff to be discovered. There's so many new corners, um, so many new genres to explore. Um, and they're not... Valiant isn't burdened by 80 years of legacy. It's actually one of the right. things I really enjoy about the Valiant universe. When they did their relaunch, people would be like, what do you think about yeah. Valiant? And I'm like, if you're new to superhero books, I actually recommend Valiant over Marvel and DC unless you have a particular superhero because you can easily catch up on the whole universe as opposed to, mm -hmm. well, I'm reading Spider-Man. What did he do 60 years ago? You know, like, right. right. There's no baggage. Yeah. It's true. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and it's, I don't know. I think it's a lot easier to, well, you know, not, not that there aren't consequences in the Marvel DC, you know, there are, um, you know, status quo do change and shift, but they change and shift at a much, much, much slower pace, um, than I think they do in the Valiant universe. You know, like one of the, one of the heavy sayings of the Valiant universe is, you know, once you're dead, you're dead. Characters do not come back in the Valiant universe. That is that is not a thing that happens. You know, ah, the rules Eternal are... Warrior, always coming back. <laughs> Part of his status quo. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just he is an that, yeah, that's kind of his thing, I know. <laughs> right. Um <laughs> literally in the uh, but uh I'm a big uh, Eternal Warrior but, fan, so <laughs> but but for now, like but that's the thing. Like if we ever did a death of the Eternal Warrior, like and, and he died, like literally he would be dead. Like that is that is how the universe works. If you yeah. know, if some if someone dies and, and takes up the mantle, um, you know, everyone is uh everyone is an uncle of the <laughs> <laughs> The books you're developing with Valiant are some of the more um, unexpected and yet wholly Valiant and appropriate titles that are coming out. Uh, you know, I was really excited about the Roku book. We talked about these in our mm -hmm. other interview, but let's talk about them again. Uh, yeah. The fact that you're doing the Roku book. Uh, Loving it, by the way. And, and yeah, it's, thank you. Thank it's a you great series. You. Six issues, by the way, like palatable, easy to get into and easy to absorb. It's not a big commitment. You just, boom, you you read it and it's practically over. Um, Quantum and Woody's coming up. And I want to talk about that because that was my introduction to the Valiant Universe back in the day. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, this is fun. Like, I remember uh, a magazine I used to read back in the day that was uh, that covered comics, really, really liked Quantum and Woody. And I was like, oh, I was really into humor comics back in the day. And uh, and so getting into Quantum and Woody, I was like, this is okay. I understand Valiant now. And like, Exo Man War, man, you know, whatever. But like, <laughs> these funny, these, these the funny other book that I'm doing. Thank you. I was like, Exo's great too. <laughs> By the way, no, but well, listen, 1993. Five. It was a very different animal than it okay, was today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my, my two favorite characters no, are actually, Eternal Warrior and Exo Man of War. So I think I have a Valiant type. I think I fall into <laughs> I think ancient you warrior well, like, that's come back to life. <laughs> yeah. By go. the way, like no, the those those first several new Valiant uh, Eternal Warrior books, not uh, Exo Man of War books, are incredible. That last one where he's a barbarian and everything, totally dope. Uh, but. Back in the day, eh, you yeah, know, <laughs> Iron Man ripoff. Nineties uh, comics are nineties. I get it. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's a it's um, a different time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, I've suggested this a million times. You guys need to play the Iron Man Exo Man of War video game on the Valiant Twitch streams. Ooh. Man, oh man, is that game <laughs> a game that exists? <laughs> um, and there are tie-in comics, but uh, but yeah, no. But Quantum and Woody, man, what's uh, what's so like? What, where did that start for you? Where you were like, did, did you know about them beforehand? And you were like, I want to do Quantum and Woody. Or were they like, we got to do something with Quantum and Woody. What do you got? Actually, exactly the opposite. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So when I, uh, when I was at Marvel and working on Deadpool, um, there was uh, another, uh, Darren Sa Sanchez, who had worked at Valiant, had come over to Marvel. And Marvel does every Christmas, they do um, a Secret Santa gift. Um, 
thing among the employees and it's you know you get you get uh your uh your person a comic book um and uh Dar darren sanchez uh who knew i was working at deadpool and loved deadpool he figured i would really like quantum Unity, and so he got <laughs> me the big um james asmus run of quantum and woody in the nice hardcover and um Ooh. and i read it and and i really liked it um you know the sibling dynamics and the wacky we're superhero duo team um it was a lot of fun and the goat you and, gotta mention the goat and a goat and of course <laughs> vincent van goat yes and their dad um, <laughs> yes uh but when so when i came to valiant and was trying to kind of figure out like what books i wanted to work on or what characters were available to develop things quantum and woody was one of the first ones that i felt very comfortable with like it, it was you know i've been doing deadpool for literally years i could cast this book i could do this book in my sleep right um and so i go into valiant and i was like what are your plans with quantum and woody and they're like we don't have any and i was like <laughs> well can i do it and they're just like i mean we don't have plans to do it but if you come up with something like <laughs> we'll we'll consider it and so uh you know i started january uh, six weeks later, I had a Quantum and Woody book greenlit and approved. <laughs> uh, and so yeah. Chris Hastings and I have, have been working on Quantum and Woody literally since February of 2019. Like, wow. We've been working on this book um, for nearly the entire year. Um, Remember how excited you were that you were able to announce it at New York Comic Con. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, we can finally talk can about finally this. Talk about <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. Can finally, finally talk about it. Uh, we have a bunch of fun marketing stuff uh that is being released and, and coming out very soon uh i can talk well, actually i can talk about it for by the time this will be live uh retailers get a goat yoga poster um <laughs> in order to help promote the book and if you don't know what goat yoga is google it. it's a real thing it's weird oh but, i know what you're talking about oh, oh no now i have to google that <laughs> hold on <laughs> <laughs> uh, i mean quad but what are you excited for christopher hastings working on it i'm excited for um Roku, obviously, we're, ex we're excited for. I need to know, yep. is there more Eternal Warrior coming? I need to know if he's going to fight <laughs> anything. <laughs> um, his name is the Eternal Warrior. He is from <laughs> Quit giving me um, his name. I so know it's in that. <laughs> his name is Galad. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, he will fight again so long as uh, the world keeps going round. Cool. Oh, I hate that. It's a PR answer. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are so many great stories. There's so many great stories. Return of Warrior. You can read every single one of them. They're all available on sale right now at Valiant Duck. <laughs> like, there you go. I was just uh, hoping that after all the top secret stuff we were asking you, that this would be the slip up. You know? <laughs> no. I love that it's not. No. I love that you're Eternal Warrior is like, nope. <laughs> you're, like, you're not gonna you're not gonna get one. No, I will say though, I have a Really good Eternal Warrior pitch up my sleeve uh, that I hope I get to do one day. Uh, cool. Crossed, okay, I just so. Googled goat yoga. <laughs> 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 what? It, it's it, For those watching, Dylan, put an image up. It's goats posing on people doing yoga. I. Yeah, it's just it's folk doing goat, yoga. Yeah. With goats okay. on top of them. Now, yeah. is it just, is it going to be Quantum and Woody doing yoga while yeah. the goat? Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> I'm going to have to make sure Greg gets me a copy of that poster. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, anything? I mean, I'm trying to think of what we could ask about Valiant that we didn't cover in the actual Valiant Comics interview we'd already done already. What is there anything right, you want like, to talk about that's coming out? Because I mean, it's been a few months, uh, one and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's so, been a month. Uh, you know, um, I've been kind of teasing a little bit, uh, and we we kind of tease this at the New York Comic Con panel. Um, you know, my favorite stuff in comics. I love crime. I love horror. Um, you know, we did tease, uh, the shadow man image, um, yes. at New York comic con. Uh, I can't say yet who is writing it or who is drawing it. That will be coming out. Um, it's you. In, in January. <laughs> I'm doing the whole thing. Uh, no, it's, it's coming out. It's coming out in January or the announcement. Um, so very, very soon. Um, I, I can say that, you know, this is a horror book and 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 a, a true horror book uh, with Shadow Man, and I cannot wait. It is, it, it it could possibly become my favorite book that I've ever worked on. Wow. Um, we, we'll see, and uh, I I can't wait. Um, 
to talk more about it, but that's all I can say now. All right. uh, and we teased it in, di in January previews with Diamonds. Um, I can't say the name of the book or again, who's writing on it, but I am doing a murder mystery, crime noir-esque type book about a superhero hunting a serial killer. Um, and I'm very excited for that too. And that announcement will be coming in December, I believe. So All right. um, I have I have a lot of new things I'm working on. Of course, the new EXO that's coming out in March with Dennis Hopeless and Emilio Liso. Um, More stuff on that will be dropping very, very soon. Quantum and Woody, uh, you know, I think the exclusive preview pages will be out by the time this is out, um, as well as some cool character designs and stuff. So keep your eye out for those. Uh, I'm just, I'm having a blast with Valiant, truly. Like, I'm getting to experiment and play um, in a way that I just couldn't at Marvel. Um, because, again, of the, of the, just the, the, burden of continuity that that you know marvel comics has right. of the you know you have your status quo and you have your continuity which is impressive um but it's it, it takes i think it makes creative freedom i think a little bit trickier mm -hmm. um and you know valiant is such a refreshing um area and when it comes to connected superhero universes right now um you know the the it's there's there's just so much possibility and it's a lot of fun to get to be playing in it you know right now especially with the bloodshot movie coming out like you know yeah um it's gonna put valiant on the map in a way that the company never has been before so are you excited for it i mean i'm pretty sure i know what your answer has to be but <laughs> yeah no, no like i i'm i'm legitimately excited for it. like i you know i will be the first to admit i'm I'm not the biggest uh, Vin Diesel fan, but that's not because of anything of Vin Diesel. It's just, I haven't watched his movies. Like I've not seen a single Fast and Furious movie. What? <laughs> it's the great, it's the seminal <laughs> greatest movie of our generation. The, the eight Fast and the Furious movies. I, don't, don't give me that look, Sal. <laughs> I, I have also, I also have never seen any Wait, Fast what? and Furious movies. Oh God! Thank you. Okay. I don't. Um, I don't care about cars. Okay, so I, I so. saw yeah, the first two either. and then didn't watch the rest. And last Christmas, I was like, I'm gonna binge watch every Fast and the Furious. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think after well, five, well, they're all superhero movies. Yeah, basically. No, they basically so are. like, yeah. yeah. But that's the thing. It's like I've not seen Triple X. I've not seen you know. I've not seen uh, Riddick. Like, oh, you got it. You got to see at least Pitch Black. I've I've heard. I've heard it's no, great. You got to start with um, Fast and Furious one through eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, start with a start with a massive ten year sprawling franchise. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so like I think the only Vin Diesel I very specifically remember having watched is the Pacifier. I was gonna say the Pacifier. I'm like, <laughs> is it the what, Pacifier? Which I love. Which I love. I think it's very fun. <laughs> I just also think it's very different in tone. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit different. I, you, you kind of uh, need to see the pacifier against a Vin Diesel movie, but I do. Yeah. Get. <laughs> right. So you don't. And, you don't but, even know but, his normal character. Right. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I just know that's what I know I mean, him as, like a baby. Yeah. That would be like you saying um, the only rock movie I've seen is the Tooth Fairy. I think he's hilarious right. in that. <laughs> That's the only <laughs> What? How have you missed every he's in everything now? Scorpion King. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the one I'm gonna start with. <laughs> you gotta start with Scorpion King. That's actually it's a little better than Mummy 2. Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. What uh, what if the yeah, rock no, was a penguin? Oh well. <laughs> well. That's Mr. Uh, Popper's Penguins too. That's what's coming soon. Yeah, exactly. Starring the Rock. <laughs> no, but the the trailer dropped and like both the the you know American watch them and i was like that's that's bloodshot like that's that's right. a bloodshot movie you know and um you know having never had a valiant film before um you know never a major motion picture studio like having captured these characters it's always a risk and it's always a question like are they going to are they going to get them and and how true to um the source material are they going to stay um because there's a lot of different trains of thought on that when it when it comes to these creative decisions and so when i when we watch those trailers like i i'm excited like i'm genuinely excited to see this film and um i can't wait for you know more trailers to drop and more teasers and stuff to get out there um and february honestly can't come here soon enough like i'm not someone that typically goes to the movies um but i'm legitimately excited to see it 
And that's that's not a PR right. answer. Like, no, I, I, <laughs> with, without the U.S. domestic trailer is dope. Like, I yeah. was like, wow, this is a movie. Without explaining yeah. how I've gotten to see it, because uh, I can't go into any of that stuff. We saw it online, like everybody else. <laughs> I'm saying, I've had the privilege of seeing uh, that trailer and a lot of stuff all the way up to this point, uh, and mm-hmm. I will admit, up until that trailer dropped, I was like, this is going to be a disaster. And then the trailer dropped, and I'm like, okay, now I'm excited to see this. This looks good and interesting. It looks like a Vin Diesel movie, which I enjoy. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say I didn't enjoy them. I just haven't seen them. Uh, but no, I'm excited for it as well. I'm also excited for a potential shot in the arm of like a superhero movie that isn't an MCU-related movie. Yeah. Because we all know how yeah. well the DCEU got received. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're getting a couple coming out soon. I'm talking early years, but whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah. anyway. Uh, you know, wait. You need to see the Iron Giant. That's got Vin Diesel in it. Oh, is it? Okay. He's the giant. <laughs> he is, you know what? You're, and, and I have seen Guardians of the Galaxy. So. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah the, 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 not exactly Vin Diesel vehicles. Good point. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. He makes a great tree. <laughs> He does he makes, make a solid tree. I hear tree. they wrote his language like, using he's, him when like he's the droids. They apparently wrote out every one of his lines, and he yep. said, I am great in his tones. Yep. Good. Exactly. So, all right. Well, uh, is there anything else that you would like to promote before we kind of close out today's episode? Uh, I know you do Signal Boost Sundays. Is there anything else that yeah. you do that's Heather Antos that you'd like to talk about? Uh, Heather Antos. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So, uh, if you don't follow me on Twitter, I highly suggest it. Um not just for self-indulgence, but also <laughs> as, as uh, no, as Vinny said, uh, I am the creator Sunday, um, one Sunday every month, usually the first Sunday of the month. I try, um, I try to keep it consistent with that. Um, but the uh, first Sunday of every month, I encourage um, any, you know, small business or creator of any kind, whether, you know, you're a writer, an artist, a podcaster, a streamer of any kind, a creator, um, you know, if you make crafts, um, you know, you respond to the tweet with the hashtag single move Sunday so I can help share your work with uh, the rest of the world and try and, you know, promote paying it forward in the, in the community and the creative community. And, um, you know, it's kind of my way of Twitter can be such a cesspool of negativity. Oh yeah. Um, what? <laughs> I know it's weird. Um, and you know, for me, I see it as, you know, me doing my small part to try and remind us that it's, it, it can be a positive community and it can be a way to connect like-minded individuals um, and helping each other. Um, and so, yeah. I mean, I mean, I follow your Twitter. You you have the same philosophy I do. Uh, I, I, if you were to be nasty with me, I'd get nasty with you. So I enjoy your Twitter. <laughs> Hell, thank you. <laughs> I always find it funny without, without going much into Twitter drama, just people that assume that you're not going to respond. To the to be like yeah. people hit me up all the time with sh- crappy comments, and I'm just like, "Do you think I'm not sitting? Okay, fine, like, we'll play this game." Like, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it comes to my phone. And it's like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been incredible talking to you, getting to hear a lot of the stories, hearing about everything that's going on. Uh, Sal, would you like to say anything on the way out before we close? Uh, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and uh, we look forward to more coming from not only you, but also from Valiant, yes. of course. Uh, so, you know, check those check those books out that we mentioned on the show. And, of course, check out uh, the, the talented and amazing Heather Antos and what she's coming for the future. Y- y- your, your love of the medium and of this job, because you've, you've used the word fun a lot when you were talking about each book you worked on. And it's like, that's that's really refreshing and it's, it's positive and it's, it's good to hear that you're having fun while doing this yes. job. And it's, well, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like an orthodontist or a dentist. It's fun. You know, it's fun. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> yeah. I, I always associate uh, root canals and tooth cleanings with, with a grand old time. So yeah, go. I mean, that's actually, <laughs> no, I mean, if you're, if you're passionate about what you do, Sal, right. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's always been something I try to tell it. I try to bring positivity in everything I do. I just, there's no reason for negativity. There's too many things to be happy about in the world world to be looking for negative yeah. things um yeah exactly. and so I, I i your positivity and your enjoyment of this job is why we wanted you to be on the show and talk to you because you we've exactly. had a lot of discussions with people and sometimes it is a little negative and you're like all right, well. <laughs> all right. but thank you so much for your time without going into any of that <laughs> 
No, thank you guys so much for having me. It was a blast. I uh, would love to come back, uh, you know, and, and give Benny um, shame for not finishing Dr. <laughs> Afra anytime. I'm going to finish it before we invite you back. You so uh, if you don't. And I will watch Fast and the Furious. <laughs> okay. If you, if you. And we can talk right. about it. So we'll talk. Make sure to see Tokyo Drift. No, first, no, 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 no. That's what I hear. I hear. <laughs> The like machete order of the Fast and the no, that's only because they tried to break the franchise away from Vin Diesel, and then they realized that that wasn't going to work. But when Vin Diesel came back, they brought the series back in time to when Vin Diesel was a part of it. So eventually, at movie five or six, don't forget, guys, you can find us normally filming this live every Tuesday at twitch.tv slash comic storian. If you want to support the show, go to either one of our Patreons, uh, Comic Pop uh, Patreon or the Comic Storian Patreon, and you can always subscribe right here at the YouTube channel to get this podcast on a week basis thank you so much once again heather and thank you sal for joining me and thank you benny for being awesome oh thank you benny anyway <laughs> i'll see you guys we love you benny we're very lucky to have you <laughs> there we go